Good morning. Good morning. Now I know, I know some of you might be thinking, Pastor, I am confused. Christmas has come and gone. And that is true. On Friday, the church remembered the visit of those wise men, the Magi, as we began the Epiphany season. So this is now the first Sunday of Epiphany. Well, if it's Epiphany, what are the Christmas decorations still doing up? Well, there's a practical answer to that and a theological answer. The practical answer is we haven't had a chance to take them down yet. That'll take place at 2 o'clock this afternoon. But the theological answer is that the promise of Advent and its beginning of its fulfillment at Christmas takes another giant leap forward today. God has come to be with His people. Jesus is going to take a giant step towards fulfilling the promise of His name. He is the God who saves us from our sins. So as we celebrate the baptism of our Lord again, I invite you to rise as we begin our service. We do so as always with our invocation. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is light. In Him there is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with Him, yet walk in the darkness, we lie and do not live by the truth. But if we walk in the light, as He is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus His Son purifies us from all sin. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. I confess to God Almighty before the whole company of heaven and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed by my own fault, by my own most grievous fault. Wherefore I pray God Almighty to have mercy on me, forgive me of all my sins, and bring me to everlasting life. Amen. The Almighty and merciful Lord, grant you pardon, forgiveness, and remission of all your sins.
rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. The joy of the Lord is my Let us pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved Son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with them of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. first reading is written in the 42nd chapter of Isaiah. Here is my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a dimly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be crushed until he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his teaching. Thus says God, the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord. I've called you in righteousness. I've taken you by the hand and kept you. I've given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison, those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I give to no other, nor my praise to idols. See, the former things have come to pass, and new things now I now declare before they spring forth, I tell you of them. The word of the Lord. And our second lesson from the 10th chapter of the book of Acts. Peter began to speak to Cornelius and his household. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, 
how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him will receive forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord.
The Holy Gospel according to Matthew, the third chapter. Jesus came from Galilee to John at the Jordan to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus had been baptized, just as he came up from the water, suddenly the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and alighting on him. And a voice from heaven said, This is my Son, the Beloved, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. On July 30th, 1941, a prisoner escaped from Auschwitz, you know, the notorious Nazi concentration camp located in Poland. And in retaliation, the commandant of the camp, well, he lined up the inmates of cell block 14, and he ordered that 10 of the men be selected for punishment. These men would be consigned to an underground bunker, and there they would be left to die, to starve to death. And as the men were selected, one of them cried out in tears, my poor wife and children, I'll never see them again. Well, at this point, another prisoner stepped forward, and believe it or not, he volunteered to take his place. And the commandant asked who he was, to which he replied, I'm a Catholic priest. And the commandant accepted his offer, and so Father Maximilian Kolbe assumed his place among those other condemned men. And during their time in that underground bunker, he led the others in songs and in prayer, and after several weeks of dehydration and starvation, only Father Kolbe and three others were still alive. Well, the authorities, the Nazi authorities there, they got tired of waiting. And so finally, Father Kolbe and the others, they were murdered with an injection of carbolic acid on August 14th, 1941. What Father Kolbe volunteered to do for his fellow inmate there in Auschwitz, it mirrors what Jesus came to do for you and for me. Christ, you see, became our substitute. He became our substitute in life as well as our substitute in death. Jesus volunteered to take our place and not only on the cross, but also in the river all those years ago. And as Jesus begins his public ministry, Matthew tells us that he goes to John to be baptized. He writes, People went out to John from Jerusalem and all Judea and the whole region of the Jordan. Confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the river. So visualize it. Can we see the picture in our mind? Can you imagine Jesus rubbing elbows, literally rubbing elbows, with sinners surrounding him as they wait their turn to be baptized? And as I picture the crowd that day, I can't help but wonder, what sins did they confess as they entered the water? Greed, gossip, pettiness, meanness, lust, jealousy, arrogance. Well, what about us? What about us who have gathered here this morning or who are worshiping at home? 
What sins did we come here to confess this morning? What sins do we need to own up to right here and now? Indifference to our neighbor, making politics an idol, wasting time on trivial pursuits instead of seeking first the kingdom of God. So as we step into the Jordan River this morning with Jesus and all of those sinners, I'm reminded of something that Dietrich Bonhoeffer wrote. If my sinfulness appears to me to be in any way smaller or less detestable in comparison with the sins of others, I'm not recognizing my sinfulness at all. Oh, you see, when you get right down to it, spiritual pride, it remains the deadliest sin of all. As Jesus begins his public ministry, Matthew tells us that he left Galilee and he traveled down to the Jordan River. He went to see John. People were going out to John from Jerusalem and all Judea and the entire region of the Jordan. And confessing their sins, they were baptized by him in the river. I ask you again, can you see it? Can you see Jesus literally rubbing elbows with countless sinners as they wait their turn to be baptized? And I can't help but wonder, just who was Jesus standing in line with that day? A child abuser? A wife beater? An adulterer? A tax cheat? Are people like you and like me, sinners one and all? And then just like that, it was Jesus' turn, and he finally reached the head of the line. But John tries to deter him. John tries to push him away, saying, I need to be baptized by you. Why do you come to me? And Jesus replies, let us do so now, for it is proper for us to do this in order to fulfill all righteousness. And then, and only then, at Jesus' insistence, does John consent. What's going on there in the Jordan River? Well, the words that were spoken to Joseph 30 years earlier were literally coming true that day. Joseph, son of David, don't be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus because he will save his people from their sins. That's what the name Jesus literally means. Joshua, Yeshua, whatever language it's put into, it means the Lord saves. So what's going on there in the Jordan River? And why did Jesus take his place in a line of sinners? as he begins his public ministry. Well, years later, the Apostle Paul has this to say, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Well, Martin Luther, he thought long and hard about what that meant, and he calls it the wonderful exchange, writing, this is the mystery which is rich in divine grace to sinners, wherein by a wonderful exchange our sins are no longer ours, but Christ, and the righteousness of Christ is not Christ, but it is ours. He has emptied himself of his righteousness that he might clothe us with it and fill us with it, and he has taken our evils upon himself that he might deliver us from them. And in the same manner, he has grieved and suffered our sins and was confounded in the same manner. We now can rejoice 
and glory in his righteousness. Returning to Matthew and what he tells us about that day. As soon as Jesus was baptized, he went up out of the water. And at that moment, heaven was ripped open. And he saw the Spirit of God descending on him like a dove. And a voice spoke from heaven saying, This is my Son, whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Well, as I think about the baptism of our Lord and its significance for the church at large and for you and me, I'm reminded of a song that's at the top of my list of those that I simply can't stand. I detest this song with every fiber of my being. You might have heard of the song. It's entitled From a Distance. Released in 1990, it near the top of the charts. It was sung by Bette Midler. Now, it's the chorus of this song that turns my stomach, literally almost making me sick. So what's the chorus that sticks in my craw? God is watching us. God is watching us. God is watching us from a distance. Oh, God is watching us. God is watching us. God is watching us from a distance. But the baptism of our Lord proclaims otherwise. God is not watching us from a safe distance. God is with us. That was the message of Christmas. God is with us. He came to take up our infirmities and to carry our sorrows. And that's not just the message of Good Friday. That was also true the day that Jesus was baptized. Jesus is the God who gets his feet wet as he stands in that long line of sinners waiting his turn to be baptized. God's beloved son doesn't keep an arm's length distance from sinners He came to embrace them one and all. And he joins us in our misery. And he even goes so far as to die with one on his right and one on his left. From the very beginning of his public ministry there in the Jordan River until his final breath on that hill called Calvary, Jesus takes a stand with sinners. You know, people like you and people like me. It was for our sakes and for our salvation that Jesus lay in the manger. And it was for our sakes and for our salvation that he set foot in the Jordan. And it was for our sakes and for our salvation that he insisted John baptize him. And it was for our sakes and for our salvation that he went on to suffer under Pontius Pilate, to be crucified, die, and be buried. Is it any wonder then why the baptism of our Lord was such good news for someone like Matthew? Because a hands-off God wouldn't do that tax collector any good. Matthew was dead. He was dead in his sins until Jesus showed up at work one day. Matthew writes about that life-changing moment. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, and Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner later that day at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with Jesus and his disciples. And when the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, Why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners. And on hearing this, Jesus said, it's not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. Go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. Well, I've not come to call the righteous. I came for sinners. Well, let's return one more time. Let's return one final time to the Jordan River. 
What's Jesus doing there as he approaches John? What is Jesus doing as he goes under the water? He was carrying out his father's will. He was doing the job that he and he alone could do. He was saving sinners. He was saving us by taking our place. So is it any wonder that heaven burst open that day and the Father thundered with pure joy? This is my Son, my Beloved, and with him I am well pleased. Jesus, you see, was sent by the Father to save the likes of Peter, James, and John. He was baptized for the likes of Matthew and the woman at the well. He came for Nicodemus and Mary Magdalene. He even came for Caiaphas and a man initially called Saul. But that's not all, not by far. He was baptized for you and for me. And he takes our sin upon his shoulders. And in exchange, he gives to us his perfect righteousness. We are now blameless, completely blameless in his father's eye. Because you see, when you get right down to it, from beginning to end, Matthew's gospel is about our Emmanuel. God has come to be with his people. And the first gospel ends with this promise of our Lord, the final words of Jesus, which ends Matthew's account of the gospel. I am with you always, even to the close of the age. Jesus is with us in our pain and our sorrow. Jesus is with us in the darkest of days. Jesus is with us when it feels like we don't have a friend in the world. Jesus is with us when we're lost and afraid. Jesus is with us when we look in the mirror and see our worst enemy. Jesus is with us when we toss and turn and don't sleep at all some night. Jesus is with us when anxiety strikes. And Jesus is with us in the waiting room, in the operating room. Jesus is with us when all hope is gone. Jesus is with us even when we take our last breath. Recall the promise that he made to a sinner when he took one of his final breaths. Today you will be with me in paradise. The baptism of our Lord reminds us of something we dare not forget, something we can cling to like a lifeline. Never will he leave us Never will he forsake us. Nothing can separate us from his love. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen.
have heard the word of the Lord and what it means for our lives, so I beg you to rise and join with me in confessing your faith. We do so using the Nicene Creed. We confess together. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, Maker of the earth and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of the one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come in and glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We come in one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated as we continue with the prayer. The church will be using the ancient litany. We will be including the Kathy Conner by name. As some of you are aware, Kathy was diagnosed with ovarian cancer. Uh, last week, and we'll be beginning treatments here in the near future. So we'll be keeping Kathy and Ron in our prayers at home, but also in our prayers here at church on Sunday mornings. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, have mercy. O Lord, have mercy. O Christ, hear us. God the Father in heaven, God the Son, Redeemer of the world. Have mercy. God the Holy Spirit. Have mercy. Be gracious to us. Spare us, good Lord. Be gracious to us. Help us, good Lord. From all sin, from all error, from all evil, from the crafts and assaults of the devil, from sudden and evil death, from plague, pestilence, and famine, from war and bloodshed, from sedition and from rebellion, from lightning and tempest, from all calamity by fire and water, and from everlasting death. By the mystery of your holy incarnation, by your holy nativity, by your baptism, fasting, and temptation, by your agony and bloody sweat, by your cross and passion, by your precious death and burial, by your glorious resurrection and ascension, and by the coming of the Holy Spirit, the Comforter. Help us, good Lord. In all time of our tribulation, in all time of our prosperity, in the hour of death, and in the day of judgment, help us, good Lord. We poor sinners implore you to hear us, Lord. to rule and govern your holy Christian church to preserve all pastors and ministers of your church in the true knowledge and understanding of your wholesome word, and to sustain them in holy living, to put an end to all schisms and causes of offense, to bring into the way of truth all who have erred and are deceived, to beat down Satan under our feet, to send faithful laborers into your harvest, and to accompany your word with your grace and spirit. To raise up those who fall, and to strengthen those who stand, and to comfort and help the weak hearted and the distressed. We to hear us, the Lord. To give all peoples concord and peace, to preserve our land from discord and strife, to give our country your protection in every time of need, to direct and defend our president and all in authority, 
to bless and protect our magistrates and all our people, to watch over and help all who are in danger, necessity, and tribulation, to protect and guide all who travel, to grant all women with child and all mothers with infant children increasing, increasing happiness in their blessings, to defend all orphans and widows and to provide for them, to strengthen and keep all sick persons, including Kathy Conner, and young children, to free those in bondage, and to have mercy on us all. To forgive our enemies, persecutors, and slanderers, and to turn their hearts, to give and preserve for our use the kindly fruits of the earth, and to graciously hear our prayers. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. O Christ, O Lord, O Christ. To the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is indeed right and salutary that we should at all times and in all places offer thanks and praise to you, O Lord, Holy Father, through Christ our Lord. Sharing our life, he lived among us to reveal your glory and love, that our darkness should give way to his own brilliant light. And so with the church on earth, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn.
King of all creation, for you have had mercy on us and given your only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We give you thanks for the redemption you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Grant us your Holy Spirit, that we may faithfully eat and drink the fruits of his cross and receive the blessings of forgiveness, life, and salvation that come to us in his body and blood. Hear us as we pray in his name and as he has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night that he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it. And he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, also after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them to drink, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament of my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. Do this as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. God spreads a table before us in the presence of our enemies.
Savior Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you always in the one true Christian faith unto life everlasting. Amen. Merciful Lord, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. You may be seated for our ascending them.
as we pick up where we left off last year, looking at the 21 different kinds of prayer that the Richard Foster described in his book. And then also, if you're able to come back this afternoon at 2 o'clock, we'll be taking down the Christmas decorations. Any and all help would be greatly appreciated. The Lord watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore.